fouling is all of the gunk that builds up on the inside or outside of a pipe, which over time reduces the heat transfer coefficient, basically adds extra thermal resistance to your system and makes heat transfer worse. And this example problem is gonna be our attempt to quantify how much worse the heat transfer uh, is gonna be for a system as a result of, again, all of this gunk buildup that is fouling. So your TA Indiana always starts off problems by writing out given find concept and assumptions. So you just take all of the known values that are given to you in the problem statement, draw a picture, label all of your distances and dimensions and everything on your drawing, Write out what you're trying to find, including the variable you're gonna use, in this case, U, the overall heat transfer coefficient, uh, the brief description of that item, and the units you're gonna use for it, watts per meter squared Kelvin. And in particular, we're looking for U on the inner surface, because UA is really the quantity you're interested in. It's not just U by itself, but it's U times the surface area, and since the inside of the pipe has a slightly different surface area than the outside of the pipe, you'll actually get a different value for you on the inside versus the outside. So a different heat transfer coefficient on the inside and outside of a pipe because there's different surface area on the inside and outside of a pipe. So the concept for this problem is the overall heat transfer coefficient and also fouling factor. And unfortunately, this is still gonna be a convection problem. We are gonna have to use internal flow equations to actually find some of the intermediate steps we need along the way. And assumptions, well, I don't know what assumptions I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna leave a blank space here so that every time I make an assumption, I'm gonna come back and I'll, I'll write that down. So first, let's go ahead and draw a thermal circuit. This is to show all of the resistances to, to heat transfer throughout this problem, all the way from the inside to the outside. So we've got basically convection from Your TA Indiana is getting old. He's almost 14 years old, so he needs a little bit of help when he, he wants to get down. The table's kind of high up, so I got to pause to give him a boost whenever he's ready to go take care of other kitty business. He, he's a busy cat. You got a real busy TA. So just be thankful he, he, he dedicated a little bit of time to help us get started. Okay, so on the inside of the pipe here, we've got convection, one over HA, from the liquid inside the pipe to the fouling Right, it doesn't actually touch the surface of the pipe, it touches the fouling first. Then we've got R over A as the resistance through the fouling. Then we've got this natural log of the diameters, right? This is the conduction through the pipe itself. We would have another fouling term, except for this problem we're saying there's no fouling on the outside. Yes, that's one less thing to worry about. But then we do still have convection, one over HA convection to the boiling water that's outside the pipe. And when we add up all of these thermal resistances, that's R total, R total is one over UA. We could either do UA for the inside or UA for the outside. Since we're interested in UA on the inside, we want U inside, we'll do one over UA inside is equal to one over HA plus R over A plus a natural log, uh, zero for fouling on the outside and one over HA. All right, let's, all right, check marks next to all the terms we know, question marks or arrows next to the terms that we don't know. We're ultimately looking for U. So if we find everything else, then we get the final answer. And can it possibly be that there's only one thing we don't know, everything else was given? All we have to find is HI. That sounds great. Only you need to find one thing until you realize that that is what makes this a convection problem. And that was like the worst part of this whole course was convection. So yeah, it's only one thing, but it's like the worst possible thing. So we're gonna use the internal flow equations and there's a whole bunch of them, but this is usually, remember the Nusselt number, right? In order to find H, you would actually usually find the Nusselt number. Nusselt number was H D over K, or we can rearrange that, that H is Nusselt number K over D. So now, if we find the Nusselt number, we'll be able to find H. The value D, right, this is the 0.01 meters that we were given, the inner diameter. 
The value for k, we will have to look this up. Now this value for k is gonna be for the water on the inside of the pipe. And so if I look this up at 110 degrees, this is gonna be a value of 0.682 watts per meter Kelvin, right? Which is k at the bulk temperature for the water on the inside. And so now, to get the Nusselt number, we have to determine, is the flow laminar or turbulent? There's different equations for Nusselt number for internal flow, laminar versus turbulent. Hopefully this is review. Um, if not, yeah, convection. It's, you know, go back, it's, it's a whole minefield. But we find out laminar turbulent using the Reynolds number, VD over nu, the like script V, that's usually the version I like using. Uh, today I'm gonna use rho VD over mu, where rho over mu is equal to one over nu. And I'm just using that because the tables that I'm looking at today don't actually have nu in them, it only has mu. So I have to look up both of these. You use whichever one is in the tables that you're, that you're given in your textbook. So for me, I got density of 950, mu of 0.255 times 10 to the negative whatever, and plug all of this in to my Reynolds number equation. 130,000 for my Reynolds number, this is definitely turbulent flow, right? Greater than 10,000 when we're talking internal flow, greater than 10,000 is turbulent, so turbulent, we're gonna use the turbulent equations. There's still tons of equations for turbulent flow, but since this is not actually a convection problem, this is a heat exchanger problem, I'm just gonna pick the easiest one and just go with it. So I'm picking the dittus bolter equation, which I'm just gonna grab this out of the FE reference manual. So 0 0.023, Nusselt number to the four fifths, and there's also a Prandtl number in there. So I think this equation is probably okay to use because we probably have a small value for delta T in between um, the boiling water and the water on the inside. It's only, you know, it's within like 100 degrees. So disc bolter, good enough for a homework problem. Just, you know, take what's ever in your book. We're just gonna go with it. Uh, we do still have to look up more numbers. Uh, Prandtl number here, uh, 1.58. And the value for N, there's a different value for N if it is heating up or cooling. And the question is always, it doesn't specify if you just look at the FE reference manual, which part is heating up or cooling, right? Every time there's heat transfer, something is heating up, right? If it goes from hot to cold, energy is going from hot to cold, this hot thing is cooling and the cold thing is heating. So what does it mean, heating or cooling? So we are using this problem N equals 0.4 because the water is heating the pipe. So the water is heating the other thing. The water is already hot, so it is heating up something else. This equation is not asking whether the water is cold and is being heated. So again, the water is doing the heating. That means we're using the 0.4 for heating. Uh, I, this is one of those things where I think the FE reference manual would be well served by adding an extra like phrase or sentence to explain which direction is being heated or cooled, because um, it's always both. Both are always happening in every heat transfer problem. Something is being heated and something's being cooled. You can't have one without the other. And the other thing we need to check to verify that we can use the dittus bolter equation is whether L over D is greater than 10, and we plug in the numbers here, yeah, we get 700, that's definitely enough. Basically, we wanna make sure that the flow is fully formed. That's what that is looking for. L over D means length divided by diameter, because right when fluid just enters a pipe, there's still sort of sloshing, mixing, as it's sort of getting settled in. So you wanna make sure that it's been, that the pipe is long enough that it has a chance to sort of reach its steady flow condition. And with that, plug in Nusselt number 341.7, and that leads to an H value 23,000. We can find our surface area. Surface area of a cylinder is the circumference pi times diameter times the length. So we have 0.2 and 0.3 for our surface areas. Making sure that I use my inner surface area on the inside with U, it's U-I-A-I, so the 0.2 area along with one over U, get a value for the heat transfer coefficient of 1315 watts per meter squared Kelvin. And with that, you deserve a break, but I've got my heat transfer playlist linked up on the screen. Go ahead and click on it and just bookmark the page. You probably don't wanna watch another video right now, but you'll wanna watch more later when you're working on other assignments or studying for your test. So just bookmark the playlist page so that when you're ready to study for your next test, you can jump back in and watch any video that you need. They'll all be there in one place for you.